Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter Joe Becker joins us. She is uh, the author of a brand new book called Forcing the Spring. It's uh, the, uh, what's the official title? Forcing the Spring, Inside the Fight for Marriage Equality. Joe, thanks for joining us here in St. Louis. Thanks for having me. First, let's talk about the controversy. I don't understand it. You're being criticized by the left for not adding every single thing about marriage equality from the dawn of time until today. <laughs> well, there's a lot of talk about what my book isn't. Uh, my, my book is, is, a, is a kind of up-close, fly-on-the-wall account of a pretty historic challenge to Proposition 8, which was California's ban on same-sex marriage. And, you know, I focused on the journey that the people who brought this lawsuit uh, took, as well as the uh, uh, opposing lawyer. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, there are many other chapters uh, in the history of this uh, movement that uh, have, you know, have but deserved to be told. I'm sure there's going to be many, many. There have been books, and there'll be many more books. Let's talk about President Obama because he ran first, his first election. He was against gay marriage, and then he evolved. What was that story? Yeah. So, well, he was he was for he was for it before he was against it before he evolved before he endorsed it. Right. <laughs> um, he, uh, as a young state senate candidate in liberal uh, Hyde Park, Illinois, said he was for same sex marriage. But as his ambitions grew and the need to appeal to a more diverse electorate, he. Uh, changed his position morphed and 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 he opposed same-sex marriage as has every other democratic uh, presidential candidate up until now uh, and you know I think it's really a measure of you know people really worried that that standing up and saying that they believed in the right of you know gays and lesbians to marry that it would just be politically you know hugely damaging and so one of the interesting kind of things I, I think is you know look Politicians are a lot like businesses. If you want Detroit to make small cars, make their customers want small cars. And, you know, the, the, the amazing thing is there's been no public shift on a social issue like this in, in, in modern political history. When I started out writing this book, the majority of Americans were opposed. Today, the majority of Americans are for this. And, uh, and, and the president's decision, forced by Joe Biden uh, to some extent, uh, came after that tipping point had been reached. So when Joe Biden, w was that a gaffe by Joe Biden? Was that planned by the White House? What happened there? Well, here's the fascinating thing about that. Two weeks before he went on Meet the Press and, and said what he said, which was that he, he he believed that gays and lesbians should marry, I mean, in some form of that, he, he had no problem with it, how he said it. Um, he had been in the home of a gay couple, and he had been out in the backyard playing with their kids. This was a kind of a campaign event. And he had been asked a question. It's a private event, no reporters. And uh, the, one of the characters at the heart of my book uh, decided, you know, he's here. I, I think I know what the answer is going to be, but uh, I'm going to ask him anyway how he feels about this. And he started talking, and he said, you know, my kids don't understand this, and, you know, young people don't even get why we're debating this, and our job, you know, there, is to keep this rolling to the, you know, inevitable. And everybody in the room sort of went, well, did he just say that? And his... His, his aide said that it had been, like, and one of his aides said it, it's like his hard drive got erased, you know, being in that house with those kids. And he told me it was, like, one of the most poignant questions he'd ever been asked and that it was still sort of ringing in his head when he goes on Meet the Press and David Gregory, who, by the way, told me recently when I was on Meet the Press that he almost didn't ask the question either. Uh, he he uh, asked this question, and, and Biden just kind of couldn't go back to the old way he'd been answering it. What's interesting about all of this is that, Dick Cheney was pro-gay marriage or pro-civil union eight years before all of this. That's true. It is true. Um, of course, uh, you know, I, I think that one of the things that my book really does uh, explore is the role Republicans have played. There, there's uh, Republicans have played a really important role in moving this issue forward. People like, I mean, not just Dick Cheney, but, but Ted Olson. I mean, Ted Olson's it was a, it was a, a guy liberals just loved to hate. I mean, he'd won Bush v. Gore for Bush, and his decision to to bring this lawsuit that I write about and to join the the fight for for marriage equality it changed. It caused a lot of people to think, well, wait, maybe I need to really think about this issue. And his decision to do it and then in turn uh, prompted Ken Melman, of course, the former Republican chairman of the uh, former chairman of the Republican Party, architect of George Bush's reelect 
to join the to come out. Uh, he had been a closeted gay man, and join this cause. And and Melman is a you know widely seen as just a genius. And you know he has applied you know the kind of data driven political approach that he used uh, in the Bush Real Act to move the needle of public opinion on this issue. It's really interesting, Joe. Wish we had more time, but I guess that's why we go out and and buy the book. The book is called Forcing the Spring. Uh, the inside, uh, inside the fight for marriage equality. Joe Becker, Pulitzer Prize winner. Joe, thanks for checking in and thanks for the book. Hey, thanks for having me. You got it. Seven fifty-eight here, Big Five Fifty KTR.